Bristle with the Eternal Shroud. I'm curious if you go on the Shroud. Plane Bristle. It seems pretty obvious that that utility plus tankiness would be nice, but. Is he gonna go more like the S and Y? Get is he gonna go more like the damage route? Get but I like this off lane Marana for specifically Liquid because if it was any other team, uh, I feel like I would be concerned for the same reasons Kyle is. But what they tend to do is they'll swap up like the roles of the Sand King and the Marana, where the Sand King becomes more of the three and the Marana is just for the egg. I think later on. Oh my goodness! Yeah, we have the full five on five here. Ready for Tiger starting to jump to the bottom. Sunrise gonna be down, starts to the Sand King, who's gonna get the kill first? Tiger's getting low to the battle right now. Nicholas running him down, but it's gonna be Liquid to get first. But taking that mind control, they do lose Tiger in return, as it's a one for one, they're gonna be able to get a second. Liquid is there also, finish off throw from Skat to the world. It's uh, two kills for Liquid, just the one hit for Nygma, but uh, yeah, both teams already ready to pull. I, I think we're going to see a lot about this game, right, Brian? Both teams are going to want to be bringing the fight. Yeah, there is non-stop fight from uh, Baldi's here. So much damage, so much control on both sides, and uh, yeah, I think that's only a small sample of what's to come. Yeah, as both take a read of one another uh, but but as you say you know you said you're interested to see what Mickey does with with carry bristol i mean game as a whole do you, do you think uh Nygma's drafted some good solutions for the bristol uh, have they sort of you know identified the fact that it would be in in this sort of position one and and have the the relevant means to deal with it well yeah what i think teams are thinking with this puck first pick is that the best way to deal with coil is to just stand there and these bristle dk heroes i think are meant to address that right but i think they're kind of ignoring the fact that gh is playing phoenix percent based damage over time uh, if there's any hero in the game that's gonna offer enough damage to bring down these strengthy tanky cores during the coil it is phoenix so we've seen gh carry the crap out of games with it in the past and i think that he's gonna be kind of the crucial factor towards it i'm curious if they're gonna try to do any synergy with the with the blood rage to amp up his damage even more but he'll probably just be using it on himself most of the game yeah sean having the this axe with the last bits was very nice get that bristol facing the, the correct way so they can get the damage into the front Top. going in lane so far quite for seven for one we are trade three Two. Round bottom, arm for Miracle. Pretty good so far here. Eight for four. Boxy getting out of this lane. Not a lot at all, but it's, it's going to be what we, we do see Liquid doing. Uh, looks like Boxy's sort of taking a step back, and they're going to be letting Tiger doing the farming on this uh, bottom lane of the tank. So weird that they do this. <laughs> the only team I've seen in a long time do it. Uh, it's a lot about. Taiga plays these really greedy heroes, the ones that end up being like carry or like poison of themselves from the support role, like the Enigma. In this case, Sanking is a very heavy farming core. He becomes well the skill pushing mobile hero. I think they're gonna have a tough time dealing with him later as well. My issue with Team Enigma's draft potentially is not necessarily that they can't bring down one of these heroes, but that they can't bring down all of them. That there's just three very, very tanky, they're all gonna build to live cores and pretty much all of the team is predicated around killing them yeah you feel it for liquid as well Bottom. getting rather low he's gonna start running down tiger tiger's first strike available for a couple of seconds Miracle's gonna have it down in time no bottom Miracle will still get the kill quite bring down the blood seeker in time as Miracle down the side hey Bob's gonna try and get back hit Remnant's out with Miracle Kuro will die but it looks like Miracle find the clean up Boxy with the leaps dalving up Miracle trying to chase Boxy's got enough leap charges to get out of there Bloodseeker hero, man. The sustain is insane. All these little skirmishes are going to come down to, like, that fine line if he gets that kill off or not, because then he gets all of his health back and lives for it. But Tiger's going to be back in lane, full HP. Void Spear will have to keep you back and give him a couple salves. He does have that, so... Lane's pushing in, though. Miracle might miss a decent amount of creeps. Kuroki going to drag the creeps off the tower for his carry. Quite nice of him to do that. I don't think that death's all that bad for Tyga. Uh, Boxy ends up getting a solo XP on a kill as well. And then uh, overall, since he's coming back full health and 
basically this this stun combo scales really well damage. against this Bloodseeker hero. He's not gonna have some natural way to survive. The Void Spirit's gonna be glued down here for a while. But uh, yeah, they just, it seems like both teams have so much threat on each other down here that it's pins and needles. That's all I'm thinking with this one. Yeah, both sides just each other very low and. Yeah, but both both duos sort of have to, to really think if, you know, can we keep pushing for this kill or are they just going to be able to turn around and... It's head, so... Aggressive at the same time, Kuros trying to go forward, Tiger. Time he can sort of find that Boros Dragon the arrow, they'll... Shot sure taking them down mid. Weeha, is he? Take the walk back to base here. Quote probably did have a... ...ED. Go help them. So... Great against it. Time to come out. Wave or so ahead of Weeha now that Weeha has had to spend that time in the space. Bounce runes up. Insania is able to step in and grab it away from the GH. Get Insania low, but can't be both the aggressive. The prize is mine. Crossing. Dyer's structures are fortified. Insania. So far, pretty close to start across the board. Anything sort of su surprising you with the way the lanes have gone down? Is there any sort of lane that you could have imagined would have the game sort of a bit more one-sided? No, I mean, most of the heroes in this game are kind of about getting their own stuff. As we see a player in the mid lane, GH with the immediate GP and Kuroki with the reach around, but no, uh, the arrow from Boxy is actually going to potentially save the choice, but here will it be enough? Dyer's mid lane. GH yeah, ever laid down those nice last few fire spirits. Do the kill on the but now yeah. Boxy, he's committed in deep to try to help out. He'll also lose suffers. his life there. Nice attempt with the arrow follow up on the GH, but not quite enough to kill him. And GH able to, to get out the, the dive in the spirits to make sure that the Nigma still come out on top of that defense ground mid. We are setting up and finding himself a very lovely. Yeah, that just shows a really good understanding of the matchup from Team Nimbus because Puck tower. just usually doesn't have enough damage to stop that original DK push. So that first DK form amounted to nothing. And that's a crucial timing to kind of slow down because DK is a traditional counter to Puck. I'm not going to have much time to talk at all this game. I've had uh, a box. See, is he arrows up on Kuroki. Could be able to have this here, Kuroki. No further way to get out of there. Tiger comes in with the last punch. Radiant's top tower is under attack. Me! Same time, top lane. <laughs> I mean, that's, that's not, it's going to be a tough hero to take down right now, Mickey, with the, the brace of the ring of health. Not really a, a target that these two are going to be able to do too much about. I just love DK against Puck because Puck's all about that full damage early, and DK has that instant stun to deal with Puck later. Uh, Seahawks decided to hurry up Puck worrying about this DK as Gray is used to kill that's the Kyle. It's pretty good when you make a quick rotation like that, and Mickey might have to be. A bit fearful, but that's the power of this is that even without his support, he should be pretty tanky here. Oh, but he he's pure damage. Oh, they got him. Oh, they got him. Wow. An excellent move from We Are, turning that, you know, quick straight zoom draw into a keeper of the light and to kill on the carry. Now back over towards mid. He's going to come across the guard to set up onto Koi for Wicked Light. Koi is trying to step back up the safety of the high ground. He's going to get away, and We Are is the one to turn up and clean up the, the glory here. Triple kill for We Are. Maybe even more boxy. It's getting very low. Uh, it's going to tick him down, and We Are going to be able to get a tether. Ultra kill on the pug. I mean, we Are could not be starting off this game any better here. 5 0 2 already for the eight minute mark. These movements are so fast. From Team Nimga, this is crazy. Like from, from lane to lane, I can't even keep up with it on the caster, let alone a player. This is crazy. What was I just had a poke around, we are not gonna be able to grab his hands on the room, will we? Away. Progress of miracle, going for the phase. Into the Radiant maelstrom. And is this sort of just this is the, the go-to build nowadays on carry blood seeker maelstrom every time? Yeah, the spell damage plus, or spell amplification plus attack speed from your Blood Rage, it, it's just too good, right? And they also buff Maelstrom so that a lot of carries are buying the item. Uh, it's just crazy that they have so many tanky cores on the side of Team Liquid, and Nigma just understands that so well because they realize that they want to bring down these cores, they need three or four heroes. That's exactly what they're bringing. They're bringing ample numbers to every single fight. And I think Liquid 
uh, even though Die. they're uh, like, dying on these crucial cores, maybe this amount of resources required to do so is not all that bad because they're still about neck and neck. To step across, grab Mickey with the call, dunk him down. As Enigma uh, just continues to do an excellent job at, at finding these kills. Pretty much every attempt that Enigma goes for in this early game to get some sort of action, especially when it's round Weeha, has just ended up in success. Liquid uh, taking some heavy hits here when it comes to the hero. Yeah, I, I really do think the setup for all this is so much about that shutting down that first DK ultimate. Because a lot of these movements would be stopped if DK was applying a lot of pressure on the mid tower. But Phoenix able to turn that tower alone. As I've talked for three seconds and we have another, another engagement kill. bottom. Yeah, Tiger is getting gone upon Radiant's by Miracle. Tower is under attack. Enigma just hey. not missing a single oh, beat when it comes to seeing any back. opportunity. Let's Let's just go, and as soon as that kill happens, we sweep across the Weir. He's making moves already with the smoke. Trying to find some jump on the box. He boxes into the trees. Taurus will end the time to get him away. Use those leaps, though, to keep himself alive. Look what they found here, too. A very juicy triple stat. They're going to be able to clear this out for themselves. Uh, those were four bounties going the way of Nygma, so that's just such a well-timed move because they knew that uh, nobody on the side of Liquid would be able to get the top bounty, so by committing four heroes here, they can safely just have the action of uh, the other two bounties. And they've caught Weeha. Koifa with the stun set up and a lot of follow-up too. Boxy with the arrow, Tiger jumps in with the bow strike, finally able to put an end to some sort of Weeha's clean opening to this game. From both teams, the Coddle gives a little presence attack. to a lot of these immobile heroes. Dyer's didn't really think about that just now, fortified. but that is going to help a lot of the weaknesses of the Liquid cores. Bristleback and DK can be able to farm other parts of the map if they need to be recalled to fight Radiant's anyways. Top tower kind of counter the Void Spear and the Phoenix. Dyer's bottom tower is under attack. Phoenix. Try and pound this focus around mid, though, causing... Continue space for, for Miracle to keep farming down bottom. Okay, gold in it. Okay, still the man at the top this game on his bristle. So, level with that. 11 for 7. Fight that. The very, very close right now. Behind him. At uh, some of the items. Tiger, he's creep away from the blink big component of fight that's going to enable them to start this chain stun we do have between the Sand King, DK and Mirana. Certainly make Weeha's life a little bit difficult. We saw last time caught up out by one stun. Pretty much done for. Not a lot that his team can do to save him if he gets an issue. Yeah, neither team really has any saves. They're all just a bunch of stuns and a bunch of damage. Uh, Mickey looks like he's going to be going for the hood immediately after the vanguard so he's going all about the tank he's also got the fairy's trinket i love this item on so many heroes and on bristleback no different most of his damage coming out from the quills and it is considered a spell so five percent spell amp on that's not bad at all i wonder if he'll rush the eternal shroud or if he maybe goes back for uh kind of like the hood into another item back into the eternal shroud what sort of options uh, would, would you sort of consider if you were the carry bristle rather than, say, going away for the Are you just sort of building? Why? Anything else that you can sort of get to, to help you out damage-wise? Or, or do, do you do think that he can afford to just build fully for the tank and rely on the rest of his team kills around him? I think that S and Y would probably be the only reasonable item, but now that S and Y no longer gives spell lifesteal amp it used to give that i i think it's not as good with uh the eternal shroud even though that didn't used to exist but you know it, it used to be synergy with any hero that wanted to sustain uh i think his damage this, items will come out later and i also think his damage comes out of his like natural scaling below the 20 talent 
uh, the Quill's damage, the level 25 talent for his right-click damage. I'm just, honestly, I don't think I've ever been more relieved by a pause, because I haven't had a second to catch my breath That's in terms so of much thinking going about on. what's going on in this game. No, it's just, uh, great to see as well for, from these two teams. It, it's just something a little bit different. I feel like we've had a lot of games to today and yesterday as well, really, where you can sort of look at it from, from really the end of the draft and sort of say, well, this, is, this game's going to be very hard for this team. This game seems pretty even, right? Both teams, very comfortable lineups for themselves. This opening 12 minutes, it could have been any closer. See him around ulti. Maybe looking to make something happen top. They have caught ultimate if they need to recall somebody else. Yeah. Like both teams are kind of just at a stalemate here. Yeah, the big four of them up. So not quite. Silence. Link dagger, very close to. Tiger, of course, here's the team. Yeah. He's given it off to Curry. He's actually going to get the gun on. Oh, he didn't really do anything about it. Backup's coming in. And he's been out of position by the call. Just to run. So he has to have a much chance to finish up the job. They would bring him in the numbers. There's the only stun on to Weeha. They get the trade. Can they get more? This game quite just trying to chase. Perot still with a dissimilated left available. And he's ready back up to in the middle, they're all getting the end on. Are they able to take it down? They're trying to burn it. They're going to make it. They'll be able to do it. Now they come to an end. But Bobby loses his life for it. Two, Mikkei still fighting for it. Though he's got a lot of money. A lot of money to do the work with. He breaks down my control. Cleans up the third. As Liquid will be able to push back Nygma. Come out on top. By their, their best attempt, Nygma, to, to really bring the fight to Liquid. Entering their jungle. As we saw, it, it is going to be a tricky game for the Jews, at least early on, to, to get these two from over off, as Liquid will be able to do a pretty solid job of taking it down, especially if Foxy's alive. Yeah, you saw the Marana pick paying off there. He did a great job of leap dodging the axe ball in order to finish off the egg. And you can tell that when he knows his purpose, he dies for it, and it's a willing sac it's a worthy sacrifice in this case, because that egg going off fell a lost team fight any time uh, for Team Liquid. Yeah, uh, you, you, and you can really sort of re respect why they to get it for, for, for that alone. It doesn't really matter about if you've got lackings elsewhere. It, it's very much worth to draft a pick to counter the Asian Phoenix because of how great of a game you're just sort of used to seeing the H have on this Phoenix. Regeneration. Probably one of the best Phoenixes. So very much worth a, a pick just to, to guarantee you can take them. Yeah, I think what makes these drafts so even from these tier one teams whenever I watch them is that every pick has a response. You don't see an egg that doesn't get dealt with. You don't see some pushing this hero that they can't bring down. You. you don't see tanky heroes they don't have enough damage. To. It's like you, every hero has a, a solution, you know? And that means that both teams have plays that can always be made. They can always take team fights because like there's some sort of AOE combination of Radiance stuns from bottom the tanking, tower from is the under Phoenix, attack. And both teams have some semblance of tower pressure, but in the form of Nigma, it's mainly the kill threat. So that's why Team Liquid is constantly able to contest these tower pushes. And the beauty of the Coddle Grip is a lot of people think of it as the mana, but I'll just harp again on Radiance her, like, iterate, tower is fact under that attack. the Coddle being able to bring the Bristol from wherever, he's basically a Spectre in regards to where he gets to farm. Like, it's not a matter of, like, you know, it's a team fight presence, but Radiance the fact that he can be farming anywhere on the map attack. as a hero that usually struggles with mobility, suddenly that's a lot of efficiency that racks itself up, and even though he had a couple early deaths, Bristol's Radiance still number one network, tower 15 minutes fallen. in. Moonlight pops in, be able to catch wind of the morning job. And uh, now they'll be able to take the fight. Yeah, done that. Giant's top tower is under attack. Yeah, Paired. Top like Mighty Shop. Jumping on to Tiger. Get up from Miracle, the other throwing everything down onto Sand King. Tiger didn't get a chance to throw anything out in return. Down, Mighty Shop. He's going to get caught out there, and he'll be the one to lose his life in return. Can they catch anything else? They can. An attempted TP out from Miracle, but they're stopped by the Baron Strike. He's trying to run with the Stolen Bones, blowing him down. But Miracle Blood also paid with his life. You bring so much attack. Under defense. attack. Tiger's buyback. Radiant's top tower. Radiant's top tower. Radiant's top tower. Catch on to Miracle. That's definitely a work. 
looks like he is going for the S and Y on Bristle. It is a very feels good item on the hero, and it's nice against Axe. Radiant really way to deal with calls to just make the call last less amount of time. Radiant's top tower uh, is it, under It's attack. going to allow him to be more mobile in fights. It's also a really good way to deal with the rupture of the stack. Yeah, so uh, Happy to bring the ball back to Nigma. Radiant's top of the study. He's going to look to take out Insania with it, and he'll get it. He really does not like Insania. I'm pretty sure that's five out of six coils that are only on Insania. Uh, the crazy part about this Bristle pick is even though it was first rounded, it seems like they have a decent amount of damage. But when I was talking about the draft, how all their heroes are about killing people, it seems like, yeah, every hero wants to kill people, but they don't have, like, the Slar or the OD or, like, the Ursa, a hero that, I guess, OD not as much anymore, but the hero that capitalizes on the enemy living longer, right? Feasting on them with healing stats or doing more damage. You see that they can bring the Bristle down to, like, 20, 30 percent. But they just don't quite have the finishing blow. Oh, if they don't bring down the pistol, that's, that's about the liquid's equivalent of not killing the king today, right? Because he's going to have all that damage dealt to you with quills. He's got, he got a salve up by Insania so he could rejoin the fight. And suddenly you're seeing the power of the pistol back, and there's been stacking engines all game for him as well. So, hero that isn't traditionally known to farm super fast, Radiant skyrocketing in net worth. And, uh, Dyer's top tower is under so far attack. for him, despite being first round. Dyer's structures yeah, it really are is. fortified. Yeah, really is. see that on the stats. He's found just as much from Newton Ancients as he has from Lane. Dyer's top tower is under attack. Dyer's, attack. Dyer's top tower As we come to know, just as a team throughout all of the sort of recent appearances in the second half of 2020, Liquid just Allies the team that stacked the most. Quit. With the Moonlight, Nigma pretty prepared though. They're all here as a five man on the high ground. He's able to find the jump on who? Rupture a Sand King. That's kind of what I was worried about when I saw their draft. Radiant's middle tower at all, has fallen. There's just too many tanky guys. There's, there's the not enough spells to be casted right. on the side of Nigma to bring these guys down. Number one weakness of Puck is sustained damage over time. Like, and this is a hero that's been getting first rounded, very considered very powerful this patch. And I think. Like, it's just, it's amazing to see these top tier teams kind of just dissect a hero. It's like their entire draft is predicated around being so tanky that the damage dummy. from Punk eventually becomes underwhelming. And this is your mid hero, it's right. It's, they didn't counter some five position hero. This is a mid Puck, and they try to make up for it, I think, with the Bloodseeker Axe. A lot of, like, first damage, pure damage. And it, it's, I see what they're going for, and I really like Dyer's it. Dyer's middle tower is under attack. It's proving to just not quite be enough. Oh, for sure. And, and in a game where Nigma's been getting a lot done, it, it's not like they're suffering in the play. It's just, it really is, as you say, just an element of the fact that the heroes they have is not quite, just not quite able to do enough to deal with what they bring at this. The action. We are trying to get the Lincoln Sphere done so he has some sort of safety against this solid initiative point for Dragon Tail. Death of him times now i wonder if skipping that spear vessel might be 
a massive mistake for Weeha here because bring down DK and Bristle mid game. I think that reducing their heal over time for Bristle, since he reduces 40% of the damage, every single health that he regen is even more impactful during the middle of a fight because it represents more damage that you have to do to him. And they went for this Witch's Blade, which is a very common item we've seen on Puck. But this Dyer's game, middle tower those times where attack. Bristle barely lived, the times where DK barely lived, might not have been the case with the Spirit Vessel. So I wonder if they'll talk about that one after Dyer the game. But, uh, obviously, this one's not over just yet. Liquid looks like they're grouping up, ready to smoke. Showing Bristle in lane, that's the that's one of his strengths as a carry, is that he can kind of just farm wherever, and you never want to go on him. <laughs> Especially against a team like Liquid, that's always going to have this sort of setup as you see Mickey. Whole team behind him. But, yeah. Trap bells. Get hurt. Top. Kuro, Tiger, finding the Burrow Stroke, Kuro's got his teeth cancelled. Gets away, they're going for the Burrow, the kid's going to start slowly wearing it down. Enigma, they do have the smoke and they, they, they have got the jump ready. Trying to mind control, a little off the mark with the call. And then Tiger, he's going to have the Burrow Stroke down, Stroke down. Off two of them, GH going for the exit. Both Mickey and Poipa just focus the supernova completely. GH will buy back, but now he's, he's without the ultimate. Dyer's bottom tower is under attack. Hey, look at Insania's inventory. He's got the shell. He's got the shell. <laughs> It really just seems to be what you're saying right now, Brian. You Dyer's know, Nick, they're, 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 they're trying to do something, but it, it almost just feels impossible right now. Like, they, what, what, what can they do? They're, they're sort of running out of options. I can't slip with Ryan right now because of the build up, the itemization they have. These heroes just seem too much to make them feel. I think one of the worst feelings is going guy that just walks into you and you just like can't do anything you're supposed to, like these heroes are meant to just burst somebody they're meant to be a threat you're supposed to be afraid of them. Top tower. You're supposed to be top worried top. about your positioning at all times with heroes like this and mickey he just ran straight up the high ground uh you know, with no care in the world doesn't even care if he's facing them i love the sand king pick specifically here because it offers an aoe stun that punishes them grouping up around the bristle. We saw it top earlier when they tried to burst him when it led to the four-man burrow strike. We saw it there. Just some sort of deterrence similar to the axe fig. Bristle is going to force everyone to group around him because if they don't hit him with four or five heroes, they're not gonna kill him. And a lot of times people say, just ignore the bristle. But he's hitting for 350 damage when he's got those uh, berserkers, or excuse me, warpath stacks going. I mean, for, for Nygma, is there is there any sort of radiant I mean, you, you, scanning? You, know, you look at the sort of the blood you can carry. I'll take your I mean, he just needs so many items, right? I mean, what sort of point does this Bloodseeker become a, a threat? Oh. Here? The top lane, we are trying to push out the lane. Face shift off. Hey, Nia. That's well, fine. Some time. Oh. He'll, be, he'll be able to make it away. The trees he goes. He won't die today. Yeah, Liquid's farming all three lands, though. Bristle's farming bottom, Coddle's pushing mid, and the gank top is more of a, get out of here, this is our lane. And if Coddle groups up with his team top, he can bring the Bristle with him. Mickey's doing the same thing as we just saw top and bottom, but he can do it by himself because he's got the Aegis. This is all just map control. They're the sheep dogs. Nigma's the sheep. They're just trying to herd them. That's all they're trying to do. And now Nigma is stuck on their triangle. This is what I see almost every tier one team do with their ages, right? They're just gonna slowly just group you together and then eventually choke you out so that the net worth lead is gonna go up and up. If they can show it to that'd be really good. But Taiga, he's ready. Be like. He's not going to get surprised by this kind of stuff. He knows he's alone. He's the one vulnerable on his team. And he is instantly Radiant's ready to react. Radiant's bottom tower is under attack. 
So much pressure coming in from Lincoln now. Okay, knocking on tier two. Enigma. Earth and Borg sat top. Radiance bottom tower on has fallen. This whole blade done. 20, I mean, 26 minutes in. This is, yeah. This is some crazy levels of farm on the top of this. So. It's all from the coddle stacks and the mana. He doesn't Radiance have to buy any mana items. He can get attack. all those extra stacks. It's so nice for Bristle. One of his biggest weaknesses is having to buy so many region items to actually use his quills off cooldown. But that's just not the case with people in the light. Oh, oh, Radiance oh, Dragon Tail starting to stay down. 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 Dragon Tail starting to